Myra Dumapias. Balikbayan. When Lola's aunties and cousins gathered around me to hear an eight-year-old girl speak her stateside English in her stateside clothes in the middle of a Singan Pangasinan, I didn't guess that seven years later, the next time I went back home, my mestizo classmates in Makati would snicker about my pisang ilong. Seven years after my cousins and I played Dr. Quack Quack and cooked invisible pinak bit with a tiny palayok set, after I, neck and armpits covered with baby powder, still sweat in the night breeze as I listened to stories of the spirit of the glass and tried hard to sleep to the music fiestas in the plaza square across my auntie's house. Seven years after I learned that I must spit after the funeral march passes and the bakla in the barbershop cut my shiny black hair and saved it for a wig, my parents and I went back to see my auntie's house, left behind by her and her family, who immigrated to the States to keep up with the Joneses. The music at the plaza could no longer be heard at night, but I remember sweating because I smelled the scent of a burning candle that was not there. My mother told me a ghost was in the room. Now I only look at black and white photos of my auntie's house, of times when my mother and her sisters were still young, single and skinny, posing, smiling, and eye squinting in their Sunday dresses on the balcony. Now my mother and my aunt, plump with wifehood and motherhood, reminisce of times before marriage and dance the twist, the boogie, and the double cha-cha together at a Filipino party in Marion, Indiana, where the pinak bed is still invisible. My cousin who taught me how to play Dr. Quack Quack has forgotten how to speak Ilocano and calls his mother by her first name. A Filipino friend misses the sound of someone calling, Manan, with a fluctuating melody. Here, Ilocano speakers call each other with a straight tune. Today, I stood in line beside a young Filipino woman. I smiled and she immediately turned away leaving me a view of her long permed and auburn dyed hair. I wonder if she ever owned a tiny palayuk set or knows the smell of spirits or dances the boogie at a Filipino party. Love's Doctrine. I don't believe in commercialized feelings, hallmark greetings shaped like hearts. I believe in love for people so powerful that labels would restrict it. One body can't contain it. It spills out as songs, a cacophony crying for freedom, to be who we are, free from gatekeepers smothering our voices. Our choices, when our choice is to hide or to die, aren't ours but of those behind walls built so thick, only echoes of love exist. I believe in love that moves you to dig into who you are, past constructions built so thick. I believe in love that if you met it unexpectedly, you'd recognize it and let it find its way into where it's always been in you. I believe love always finds a way through disrupted plans, sudden openings, and timely shifts. Yet the world of love can be yes and no, now and not yet, is and isn't at once, until we make a choice each time we are given it. Synaptic belongings. I sort through belongings of my parents from different countries. Leftovers cherished, cherished not overly left, or over-cherished that's left. I touch fibers of years I wasn't there and move through dust settled on familiar years I was. I revive days forgotten, tucked in between pages of my childhood. I remember my belonging. It's in everyone I left behind and everyone I was about to know and all that space in between. Alchemy. 
a flip-flop hainaku. Time swirled when our paths cross. Never the same was I again. Time swirled when our paths cross. Never the same was I again.